From a very young age, we're told that the way to score highly is through hard work. Time is the only measure ever used to determine whether someone is working hard or not, and we're never actually taught how to study. Statistics have found that 18% of year 12 students are studying three hours a day or more, and 7% are studying five hours a day or more. Studying so much would probably be fine if the amount you study directly correlated to your grades, but I can guarantee you that this isn't the case. At the start of year 12, I was sick and tired of people telling me that I needed to work harder and harder and that I needed to study for three to four hours a day without actually thinking about whether my study was effective or not. I wanted to prove that you could get a high ATAR without having to have your eyes bleeding from reading textbooks, so I set myself a challenge to download an app called Forest and to track every minute I spent studying. Every time I was in a free period, studying outside of class or doing a practice exam, I would turn on Forest and track exactly how long I was studying for. At the end of the year, I got an ATAR of 99.8, which I was super happy with, but what was even better is that I hadn't had to study for the three to four hours that everyone had been telling me to, but in fact, I had only studied one hour and 32 minutes on average a day. In this video, I'll share six of the tips that helped me make the most out of every minute that I spent studying, the first of which is setting realistic goals. It might not be very obvious how setting goals can make you a more efficient studier, but I think goals are so important because they help fuel your motivation and your motivation makes you more efficient at everything that you do. Motivation is something that I know a lot of people struggle with in year 12 and it's something that I struggled with as well. It's so easy when talking about motivation to embrace these quick fixes or hacks that might work for a week or two, but then after that, you'll be back on your couch watching Netflix and feeling like a lazy slug. What I mean by setting realistic goals to build motivation is setting an achievable but also challenging amount of work to do each week. If you have a set amount of homework to do, telling yourself that you're going to do an extra two hours of revision every night probably isn't realistic because you won't have time to do that. That's an example of a goal that would be far too challenging, but you also don't want to go to the other end where your goal is too easy. If you say that you're only going to do the homework and no revision, you might have a lot of extra time, but then when your assessments come up, you might get slapped in the face because you realize that you don't know any of the content. Finding that Goldilocks zone where you set yourself an amount of work that is achievable but also challenging is really good because one, it helps you feel a sense of achievement when you complete it, and two, actually challenges you to go outside of your comfort zone. Once you've set your goals, I wish it was as easy as letting that perfect ATAR roll in, but unfortunately, even with all the goals set and all the motivation in the world, you can't get good marks if you don't actually sit down and study. It's not uncommon to hear people say in year 12 that they're studying for four to six hours a night, and it's really easy to start to feel inadequate because you're taking these numbers at face value. However, I would guarantee you that a lot of these people saying they're studying for four to six hours a night are actually spending it doing quite inefficient study. What I've learned from year 12 is that one hour of efficient study is worth way more than four hours of study where you're watching your phone, you're getting distracted half the time, and you end up doing very little work. This is the main reason I started the challenge in the first place because I hated people telling me that I needed to work harder and harder when what I really needed to be doing was studying smart. When I was in year 12, I made sure to put my phone in another room or to use Forest to lock me out of using any of my apps. On my computer, I set up really strict times for when I was allowed to watch YouTube, Netflix, or anything non-study related, and I made sure to download some browser extensions that actually stopped me from accessing these sites. The goal of doing all of this was to make sure that I got into the flow state and to make sure that every minute of studying I was doing was spent doing studying well. The third thing that I found helped me make the most out of year 12 was using accountability buddies. Even when you set yourself some goals and tell yourself that you need to study effectively, it's hard to keep yourself in check. It's so easy when you're studying at home to tell yourself that, hey, another episode of Netflix doesn't sound so bad or another game wouldn't actually be too bad. But in reality, you know that these things are bad for you and that you shouldn't be doing them. Doing this is so easy because we aren't superhuman and it's really easy to get into the habit of letting ourselves down. This is why getting an accountability buddy can be so helpful because instead of letting down just one person, now you can let down two. In all seriousness though, sometimes the worry of not letting another person down is all it takes to actually gain the motivation to do that bit of study or to turn off Netflix or to not take that other game. If you have some English essays that you need to write, ask your smart friend if they can read them five days before the actual assessment is due 
so that then you have to get them complete so that your smart friend can read them and then you can also apply the advice they give you. All of a sudden, you know that your smart friend is waiting for you to give them your essay on that day and you know that you don't want to disappoint them. This is something I did a lot in year 12, especially when I wanted to submit an imperfect draft to get feedback on from my teacher. A lot of the time, the extra push of knowing that someone is waiting for you to complete something is all you need to get started on a task. Once you're actually spending your time somewhat efficiently because you have the motivation to do so, the next best place to start optimizing the way you're spending your time is through effective revision techniques. When most people reach year 12, they've never actually received any formal education on how they're supposed to learn. From a young age, all we're given is some textbooks and some questions to write on, and we're never actually told how to use them or how to learn properly. Many people default to strategies like taking notes, highlighting and summarizing, and rereading their notes to learn, even though these strategies have been proven to be not very effective. Studies have found that study techniques like active recall, spaced repetition, interleaving, and inquiry-based learning are far more effective when it comes to learning and can improve your efficiency at studying by almost double. Active recall is essentially a fancy way of saying using your memory, and this is something that I tried to maximize as much as I could in year 12. I knew that I didn't want to spend huge amounts of time writing notes, especially if I didn't gain much from doing so. Whenever I learnt new content in year 12, what I would do is I would simplify my knowledge of the topic as as much as possible and bring it down into a single page of notes. After writing down one page of notes, I would actually throw them in the trash straight away because I knew that all the information in my notes would one, be available in a textbook, and two, I didn't want to fall into the trap of just rereading my notes as a form of lazy revision. Because I was saving time by only writing one page of notes, this meant that I had so much more time to spend on practice questions and flashcards, which were more effective at helping me build up my recall of the topic. In year 12, your final exams are so important and sometimes they make up 66% of your actual final mark. And as a result, it's so important that you get familiar with answering practice questions and being able to remember the information that you need to answer practice questions. It doesn't matter if you've built a somewhat strong understanding of the subject through your notes, if you don't know how to recall that understanding or apply it to practice questions. The fifth tip I have for making the most out of your study is to target the subjects that will maximize your marks. Looking at my Forest app, you'll realize that I actually spent the most time studying English because I knew that it was a subject that I wasn't necessarily so strong at and I knew that it would be a subject that mattered a lot. Everyone will have subjects that they are stronger and weaker in and as a result, you need to be able to identify which subjects you wanna put more time into to cover for your weaknesses and also to focus on your strengths. Often people fall into the mistake of only studying the subject they're good at because they enjoy the feeling of being competent and being able to answer questions. Since VCE at least has a top four system where your top four subjects count fully, but then your bottom two only count for 10%, this means that it's really clear what subjects you want to be focusing more on. Because of that, spending your time on the subjects that are more important is so critical because your time is so valuable in year 12. Now, my final tip is being real with yourself. If you know that coming home from school and watching YouTube makes you feel demotivated for the rest of the afternoon, maybe you should stop watching YouTube. If you know that you're exhibiting behaviors that will hold you back in the long term, it's so important that you need to be real with yourself and try to stop yourself from exhibiting those behaviors. It's so important to develop a growth mindset and realize that you aren't someone who just was born to watch Netflix when you come home in the afternoon, it was actually the combination of your life experiences and your habits that have built up over time that make you actually exhibit this behavior. As a result, it's so important to realize that it also works in the other direction and making small changes over long periods of time will help you to unlearn these habits and actually become more productive. Having this growth mindset means that you can take control of your life so much more and start undoing these behaviors one by one and becoming a better person. This last tip is probably one of the most important ones because without a growth mindset, it's probably going to be hard to apply any of the tips I mentioned in this video. If you're watching this video though, you're probably in the right place and you're probably on the journey to gaining a growth mindset. So feel free to expand your knowledge more by watching this video on how I deal with exam stress.